Yes, at this time we are uh, we are joined. Oh, it's been one of those shows, man. We are joined by the fedora wearing John Hudson, who's in the background laughing at me tonight. John, thank you. I need a little bit of humor right now in order to try and make this night just just end, just end. You know, it's very rare we actually have a show like this. And I it feel is. Bad. I feel bad for Alan because he is such an incredible guest. And, you know, I mean, he just didn't get my best tonight. Well, feel- you know what? Honestly, it was Alan's own fault for having such a good first show, you know, because it's hard to go anywhere from there. Right. So, That's you know, it, it, you know, in that, you know, he, he just he shouldn't have performed so well on that first show. Well, the problem was he gave us one hell of a second show. I blew it, though. I blew it. Well, I, I got to tell you, I understood what you said about being frustrated by the details and, and also just the, the real time experience that you were going through hearing it. You know, it, it's, a, it's a whole nother level of, of, of complexity. But the truth of the matter is, as a listener, it, it actually it wasn't it wasn't as bad as you think it was. Well, that's it, it impacted your voice far more than it impacted his. Yes, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. All right. Happened. What happened with Facebook, man? So did you all notice something today? <laughs> man, some of the memes have been going around. It's been outstanding. Yeah. So um, as you may not have heard, um, Facebook uh, went down for a little while today. Um, so did, uh, of course, Instagram and Messenger. Um, this had cascading effects because, of course, once all those went down, what did everyone do? They ran to Twitter to complain about it. <laughs> And so then Twitter started having problems because of all this increased load that they weren't expecting. Um, but, you know, I, I don't want to bore you, Dave, or anyone else with details, but I thought it might be helpful just to give a, a quick um, a explanation of what happened. And we don't know why it happened, but we do know what happened. Uh, and that is that the Internet runs on a protocol called BGP, OK, Border Gateway Protocol. It's a beautiful protocol. And it's one of the only really proto- one of good protocols that works like on every system and it allows for incredible interoperability on the internet. The problem is, is that it's a little bit hand driven in that essentially each network has to advertise what it knows. So Facebook advertises, this is how you get to my DNS servers. This are, these are the networks we run. This is how you get to the networks we run. Um, these are the other networks we know how to get to that you might want to get through to from us. And they have to advertise this. And there's these advertisements that go out. Well, today at a um, uh, basically uh, Facebook stopped um, telling anyone who they were. And um, so it initially looked like a DNS problem because their DNS wasn't responding. It wasn't that. It was that they stopped telling anyone they even had DNS. They stopped telling anyone anything. Like they just went quiet. And um, it looks like it was most likely just a configuration error. Just um, someone just messed up a configuration file. We don't know that for sure. Um, and honestly, we may never get the full story out of Facebook because a lot of times companies have, have trouble being really honest about what, what went wrong, which is sad because humans make mistakes. Life goes on. But um, essentially what happened was, was that Facebook stopped advertising how to get to them and how to talk to them. And so the whole world went poof and Facebook just vanished. And so it just gives you all a little bit of an idea of how in some ways fragile um, the internet actually is because it's it's very uh, it's very opt in um, from a networking point of view. You know what? Uh, you're probably ninety nine point nine percent right on this, but I'm going to tell you, man, the conspiracy theorist in me, if I put on my tinfoil hat, it says that I wonder if it had anything to do with that whistleblower going on. 60 minutes the night before oh well now here's the thing um how it happened within facebook how that how that how that advertising stopped happening could have been a disgruntled employee that was now very mad about that about that press conference it could have been all sorts of things so we don't know how why they stopped advertising so there's still a whole nother story on the facebook side as to what went wrong but from the outside world point of view um, Cloudflare and a bunch of other really, you know, great shops did a lot of great analysis, and I'll include it in my notes. And we know exactly what happened, what time, you know, what stopped being advertised, you know, at a packet level. We know exactly what happened, but what happened on the inside? And sometimes this is conspiracy driven. There is something called BGP hijacking, where a nefarious character can advertise 
someone else's routes. And there have been cases where like large portions of the internet have been sucked down in in three hours by a, a, another country because they accidentally advertise the wrong routes. And in some cases, it's not accidental. So sometimes there is nefarious things going on. Now, apparently there's a report going around that on the dark web, because of this crash, 1.5 billion people, which might include you and me as well, have had their information stolen because of this. Are you buying that or is it just another ruse from the dark web? No, I mean... Um, that doesn't actually really make any sense because basically like, I mean, you couldn't get to Facebook, so I'm not sure how you'd be grabbing any data from them. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, basically if someone starts offering, if someone starts like offering like prices for, for that data, then things get a little more real. Right. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is it just like with your credit, right? The way you manage your credit is not to track every credit card. It's to check your credit report. And if you see something suspicious, you act on it. It's the same thing with your data. You cannot control what's going to happen to your data. In the U.S., if any place goes bankrupt, they will auction off all your data and they have to. The judge will make them. So there is absolutely no protection of your data. There's no reason to worry about it. Just worry about what people do with it. All right. Einstein's assistant apparently recorded an interview right before her death about the Roswell wreckage. This is interesting, my friend. This story is it doesn't have a lot of information yet right now you can read about it on mystery wire um it's um it's but it's potentially it's potentially huge so the whole idea is is that einstein had an assistant and this assistant was interviewed some time ago and i believe in 93 and um she then passed away i believe in uh, 2012 i think it was but the person that recorded that interview kept it. And essentially, um, uh, uh, someone got their hands on it uh, through t- trekking down this woman. And in this, conf- you know, this testimony this woman gave, she claims that um, in 47, Einstein was invited to an emergency meeting uh, in uh, New Mexico. And she had to go with him because she was his assistant. And they landed at a base and they were ushered into a hangar. And there was a disc shaped craft there that looked damaged. And there were um, five beings. Um, there was one of them that was still alive, that was gasping for, for air and, and trying to communicate, uh, but couldn't. And she described the beings, she described the ship. And she said that uh, after Einstein was kind of showed around the, the hangar and shown everything, uh, he he was asked to leave. She was told to keep her mouth shut. Einstein then had to go back and write a report. That report went somewhere. No one knows. Unfortunately, no one has been able to confirm this by outside sources because no one can track down his itinerary. No one can track down the flight records. No one can confirm what Einstein was doing that day because this has been looked into. But And I don't know if the interview tape is going to come out yet. We need to look into that because it's just breaking on Mystery Wire. But if if there's any legs to this, this is not only a big deal, this is a super fun story. Oh, yeah. And this is the kind of juice we love. Oh, this yeah. I mean, the kind of juice we love and need. Yeah. And the thing is, is that there's little there's little snippets in the story yeah. that, that give it some weight. Like, for example, the, the assistant said that, you know, when they got into the hangar and they saw everything, that, that she was terrified. That she, I mean, she was just literally terrified. And when she looked over at Einstein, he wasn't, he was not at all, but he was intensely curious. And what he basically said was that uh, he became intensely uh, wondrous about what the propulsion system was and what he could learn about the nature's view of physics that he didn't understand. So he, when he immediately saw it, he went to, how can this help me? Right. How can this help me solve the problems that I'm working on? And and that's that was you know, that's that's pretty that's pretty Einstein. So um, so there's you know, there's a couple other data points. I highly recommend everyone go to Mr. Wire and check it out. I'll, I'll provide links. But this is a fun story. And the fact that they have the actual audio of the interview, which I have not heard yet. I don't even know if it's available yet. But the fact that that audio recording exists means that things like voice analysis might be able to be done other analysis might be able to be done this story has some legs to go on it and it's a really exciting fun one you know it's just it's a cool cool story um 
and it, it just it, it it'll 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 it will cause this domino effect because um you know there's if you look at the guys back then you know uh, einstein Feynman, all the, you know there's all these guys that were doing all this crazy stuff and you know every once in a while they would make little comments and they would just be kind of like well wait, did that mean anything or is that just you know is that just Feynman, right and and do you start getting any concrete data that they had any involvement in any of these programs now you can from that data point start branching out and saying okay well does that does that add any inference to this does that mean that this had any more weight this is this is a big story and I think a lot of people don't realize how much work Einstein did for the United States military and government. I mean, yeah. when we look at Einstein, we always think of E equals MC squared. We're not looking into his role into, you know, being right on scene during nuclear weapons testing or rocket testing or or anything along those lines. We see him as as the great genius who was solving all of these mathematical and, and, and physics type of theories and establishing them, you know, but I mean, this was a man who was highly involved in a lot of dark projects and I don't see, yes, it's another deathbed confession. Yes. There's going to be the people who roll their eyes at this, but I just do not see Einstein's personal assistant lying about something like this before she died she obviously wanted to get it off her chest absolutely and let's face it you know i mean there were there were so many other stories that she had to tell about einstein that that would have honestly made her a lot more money than this one right um you know there were so many personal stories that she had at her disposal so much knowledge she had this was this was you know this was not something that was going to help her in any way right um, so it's great. I think, I think there's some good possibility on this one. All right, let's move on. Lou Elizondo talking again. Who is he on with and what were they talking about? Okay. So for those of you in, uh, the kind of Gen X sort of, you know, age group, you remember MTV, right? You remember VJs, right? Do you remember Kennedy? Right. She did that show Alternative Nation. She was this very hard nosed, um, very libertarian, very uh, in your face, brilliant woman that like I, I, for, I don't know, for me as a kid, like had a big impact on my perception of how news should be investigated and taught and so forth. And it turns out she's still alive and she works at Fox Business News. And um, and so she interviewed uh, Elizondo and in the very Kennedy way. Um, she was hard on him. Um, it's a short interview. I'll post it, but basically, you know, he talks and talks and talks and she's like, yeah, but can you stop tap dancing and like, tell me something like, and he's like, uh, well, blah, blah, blah. and she's like, yeah, that's not very interesting. You know, <laughs> and he's just like, he had to keep like, and so finally at the very end, he, um, he basically, you know, uh, coughed up and said, well, you know, um, you know, one thing that's not been reported is that there was, um, there, you know, there was one month with, um, with 37 incidents in one month. And in, in that month, there was uh, up to seven incidents in one day. And even that she was like, eh, you know, <laughs> she was like, whatever. And, uh, and so then he's like, well, you know, um, there, there is also some evidence that there was some, um, some medical, uh, impact to, to some of these people and that, that, that needs to be investigated. And she's like, there you go. That was great. Why didn't you start with that? Now we have to end the interview and it just cuts. <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, it is just, <laughs> it is just, it is, it's only like, I, I forget how long it is. It's like two minutes or something. It is a fantastic interview. Um, she basically says to Lou what so many of us have wanted to say to Lou. Um, and, and she still wasn't rude or anything about it. She was, she was just, you know, she was just dedicated and it was, it was cool. It was, uh, many props to, to Kennedy. She, she was, she was, uh, she was in her, in her, it was awesome. I you know highly I, recommend it. You know it. what I've been noticing lately is there has been a lot of grief in the UFO community about, you know, sh sh shipping away from Kennedy and moving over to Tucker Carlson for a second. But there has been a lot of heat on Tucker Carlson and his coverage of UFOs lately on UFO Twitter and and people really oh. con condemning, you know, him keeping going after the story. It's created quite a debate recently. Have you been following this? A little bit. I often get turned off 
uh, quit pretty quickly because people start um, uh, letting their own opinions about Tucker come into it. And and you 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 have to suspend that to a degree. I mean, because I'm one of those people like I am not a Tucker fan. Like I have heard things come out of that man's mouth yeah, that too. just freaked me like, oh, really disturbed. You want to give him a good shaking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just really. Yeah. Just caveman stuff coming out of this guy. Right. And um, but the fact is, is that none of that comes into this reporting. And um, and he's the only bloody person doing it. Right. Like, I mean, I, I, I maybe in the beginning. Right. But there's nobody consistently bringing this up and consistently letting Lou talk and consistently. And, and this was actually an interesting interview because they really went over the, the five pages in the, uh, in the, um, uh, in the military spending bill um, and what each section means and why it's a big deal. And so that, that's why that Tucker Carlson interview is really good. But, um, but I, you know, I, uh, you know, what I, what I can't get out of any of that debate on Twitter is, is whether anyone's really, specifically critiquing the way he's he's interviewing lou like elizondo is he, is he like you know are they saying he's softballing it like i don't get any of that all i get is people fighting over whether tucker should be given any time at all because of who he is 